Welcome to those who are joining us for this media briefing on day six of the Plenary Council's second gathering in Sydney. My name's Adrian Taylor and I work for the Communications Office in the Archdiocese of Brisbane. Joining us tonight is a panel of three members from the Council, Miss Erin Gillard, Mr Julian Newen and Father Tony Corcoran. A brief pen pick of each of the participants tonight. Father Tony Corcoran is a provincial of the Maris Fathers in Australia. Originally from Grafton, New South Wales, he spent 12 years in Rome for the Maris Fathers General Administration and is currently engaged in seminary formation and lecturing in biblical studies while also serving as the parish priest of Hunters Hill. Erin Gillard is a married mother of, and works as a family educator at St Francis Xavier Catholic Primary School, Lernia. She is a member from the Diocese of Wollongong and calls St Mary MacKillop Catholic Parish at Oran Park home, serving on the parish leadership team. She was part of the inaugural cohort for the Leadership for Mission program for young Catholic women. And finally, Julian Newen is a coordinator of the Arch Adelaide Archdiocese's Catholic Office for Youth and Young Adults. Qualified social worker, Julian was previously a senior practitioner in the Community Youth Justice Section of the Department of Human Services. He was recently appointed Assistant Vice President of the Vietnamese Catholic Community and is also a member of Adelaide's new Diocesan Pastoral Council. So to commence with the questions, just a, a, probably an easy one to kickstart. Another full day today with possibly more voting than discernment uh, and, and reflection. How did you feel dealing with the rejigged schedule? I'll start, I guess, because I've got the mic. Uh, look, it's been a long week. Uh, so if, if the cogs stop turning, I do, do apologise. But um, I guess dealing with the, uh, the rejig, it's felt like we've played a bit of catch up um, since uh, I think it was Wednesday when we had the rejig. So it's been a bit of catch up um, and we've had to go back and forth uh, even yesterday and today. Um, I think it's safe to say everyone's pretty tired by this point, um, but we leave feeling pretty hopeful that um, we've had the opportunity to have the rejig, you know, so that we can um, look at the, the motions a bit closer and make a more um, informed decision uh, after having more time, I guess, to discern. Uh, I feel the same. It's been a pretty exhausting week, um, but I feel the Holy Spirit has kept us going, even despite um, the full schedules that we've had. There still has been uh, incredible energy in the room uh, post-Wednesday. Um, so I'm really tired but really joyful uh, that we've come to the end of this week with some great outcomes. Well, if those two young people are tired, you can imagine what this old bloke's <laughs> feeling. Um, but I, I, I'm finishing... Uh, I came to this uh, second session. I wasn't at the first uh, because I wasn't involved. Because I'd come back from Rome, I wasn't involved in the lead-up to. So when there was a vacancy, I uh, jumped at the chance. I came with, uh, with this... I'm rather probably rather cynical and, and prejudiced uh, and I wasn't sure just what would come out of this. But in fact, today I uh, am, am very content with what's happened and uh, today people were tired and, but uh, we had a, a funny um, presenter who, was, who sort of kept us amused and also there was great joy after the uh, dis the uh, voting on um, the um, section on women and their uh, dignity and their part in the church. Okay, other questions from around the room? Thank you very much. Um, Mark Bowling from the uh, Brisbane-based Catholic Leader. Uh, Unfortunately, we haven't had a chance, the benefit of, of knowing what was going on inside. So if I could just ask one of you perhaps, and, and if, you feel, if you're hitting the wall, then someone else could take over, uh, just to, to go through how the motions went. And of particular interest, of course, is the, uh, the dignity of women issue. Maybe that could go to, to Erin. So uh, we had some wonderful um, working group uh, rejig 
um, section for um, a rewriting um, and a separation of some of the motions. Um, quite unanimously across um, the floor, there was a clear consensus that this rewrite was a better reflection of the experience of women broadly in the church. So wherever they find themselves on the spectrum of what it is to be a Catholic woman, um, we found a midpoint. Um, it was a, an opportunity for a, a foundation and a starting point, um, but then also um, and understanding that this is just the start and there's a lot more to do, um, a lot more to come. So um, I would say all the motions did pass, uh, which is wonderful. Um, I'm proud to say that. I feel I could go home now to my daughter and say, yes, the Catholic Church value women and men. Um, and it is a good day uh, in that respect. So um, I'm very... Um, I feel very content uh, with what has come out um, and it's a beginning and, and a way forward. And when you do read um, that section, you will see quite frequently the reiteration that this isn't the, the end, this is just um, uh, an ongoing process. Yeah. Does anyone else want to add to it? I think, I think there was a recognition and um, we, a realistic recognition of all that women, all the different roles and the responsibilities that women do have in the church already, and uh, f in all sort a range from uh, being I'm not sure in Australia, but um, um, being the vicar, the um, chancellor of a diocese. Um, their responsibilities in so in areas in the running of the of a diocese and parish, and also in the many other being headmistresses of our schools and so on. And so with what's been added now is a future, hoping that even that will uh, um, evolve and um, that um, women, the church and the bishops and leaders will be more open and receptive of women and their roles and their talents in the church in all f areas from liturgy to um, chanceries and whatever. Thank you. We might take another question. Any from this side? Uh, thank you for that. Well, before that, uh, actually, I did note that um, Mark did refer to uh, the range of motions that, that were passed, the range of parts that were addressed today, um, particularly the women, but not only the, the women's and, uh, and women and men sections. So, did you want to speak to the other sections today that were passed as well, or that were looked at? Yeah, I think uh, what was uh, part five was that on sacraments. sacraments. Yes, part six was about um, formation, uh, leadership uh, in the mission and ministry of the church, and. Um, I think that section to me resonated a lot today. Not that the other sections didn't, but that one certainly resonated with myself personally um, because there was a strong emphasis on um, young people in that section. Um, we know that uh, young people are the future of uh, our church in Australia, um, but it was probably uh, lacking young uh, young person's perspective in, in that section. So there was a strong uh, voice from uh, from those in the room, um, wanting to see uh, young people represented and represented well in in that section. So, you know, really um, highlighting and emphasising that uh, formation of youth mi ministers in youth ministry is a really important part of our church going forward. And so we had to make sure that we honoured that and put that in in there. And and just remember that, um, you know, there's a lot of good youth ministry happening uh, in all. Uh, areas of our Catholic Church. Just following on from that with the sacraments, um, um, perhaps Father Tony might want to talk about this, was, and not everyone might know this, but the uh, motion around the third rite of penance. Um, yes. One was about increasing understanding of the, the three rites, um, but one was also about uh, asking Pope Francis to consider where it might be appropriate to use the third right. Um, were you surprised by the fact that that motion was passed? And uh, what do you think? I was on my tenterhooks. 
Um, w it was passed uh, quite well in the, ad what we say, the con consultation, consultative vote, and then it went to the bishops, and uh, that's where I was uh, on my tenterhooks, and it, c it did get passed. Uh, not, not uh, uh, what you saw, ad everybody, but quite a g good number. My, um, just say one of the, um, I, I agree the, for me overall the most important and the most significant of all the um, um, sections was the one on formation. Um, I'm very much interested in formation myself but I, I uh, um, have from our whole, all of the discussions throughout the week that importance and the need for forming uh, leaders for ministry and for mission is, um, pr at, I'd say, one of the most important things to come out of the um, uh, council. Did did the votes that you cast in these past two days feel a little bit different to the ones earlier in the week? Because I was conscious, uh, and I think I heard Shane talking about they were re rejigging and winnowing the the kind of way that they were presenting information and then voting. So did you feel like you were in a better position to cast your votes these past few days? I, I believe so. Um, someone on our table said that uh, the first few days it felt like we were just ticking a box and getting through it very quickly. Um, although we had spiritual conversations at our tables, it, it felt very rushed um, and we probably didn't have enough time to sit with a lot of the, a lot of the matters at hand. Um, and so going into the last two days, I think um, whenever we had to vote on motions, it felt more um, complete. It felt more uh, discerned. And, and I think the general feeling around the room was we were much more comfortable uh, going forward in that manner. Yeah. Uh, for me, there was, um, from Wednesday onwards, um, a greater openness and a need uh, to dialogue and to understand where the other person is coming from. Um, so rather than sometimes not knowing um, or some people voting out of fear of the unknown, we were able to dialogue at our table groups, we were able to take to the floor um, and put opposing views up and, and talk about them. Um, we were able to offer amendments to what was already written um, in the introductions. And to be honest, I feel that the ability and opportunity to do that we didn't have before from my understanding um, and now we were able to refine it and in my opinion it's a better document going out and is reflective of the church. For example there was in the sacraments which was one of my favourite topics um, because it highlights the importance of liturgy and the Eucharist and um, sacramental uh, sacraments of initiation but there was a really glaring ob obviously a mission for me there uh, the mission of the RCIA so by um, able being able to take this to the floor we were able to put it to uh, the writing committee and, and the steering committee that we needed to adjust that so it better reflects um, when people are entering into our beautiful church so that's just one example of um, things that were added uh, as Julian said the addition of youth ministry more specifically um, priesthood um, when we were talking about sacraments uh, as well so um, I feel it's a more complete document and I'm uh, a very proud um, of what we've come um, to the end of the week with. I mean, Wednesday was a hard day, and, um, and at one stage you'd wonder, we wondered how we would, could sort of get out of it, and it came about because of the the, the original process. Mm -hmm. uh, from the very beginning, I found the the process. Uh, stultifying and, and in, in, uh, entrapping. Uh, there was no way that you could really change what was in the, do in the framework. framework. So um, um, we, right throughout, we've been saying that the Holy Spirit, we believe the Holy Spirit was with us. Well, here was the Holy Spirit sort of blowing uh, and disrupting and frightening and all those things that you expect happened at Pente on Pentecost. 
and and um, out of it came uh, uh, the the peace and the joy that we finished with. Other questions? Father Tony, with your experience of Rome, um, what do you think the odds are? I know it's not really a betting game, but what do you think the um, likelihood is that um, Pope Francis will be amicable to the uh, Plenary Council Assembly findings? Um, or, or is that just my fear or in asking a hypothetical question about something that, that, that is with the Holy Spirit? I, I don't think there is anything... Uh, what, what Pope Francis might think of it or what, how he would respond, I have no idea. But I, it, f f uh, I can't see that there would be anything that would uh, surprise him or that would uh, disturb him in all, or in all the decisions that we've made. Um, <coughs> yeah, I just want to ask, I suppose, just a general question of what has been your experience of synodality so far? I think you know, the world, I suppose, looks to Australia because Australia is doing this kind of weird thing with the Plenary Council and, and because synodality is a bit of a buzzword, it can very easily lose its meaning or just seem really wishy-washy. Um, so, yeah, what's your experience? Has it been an edifying experience for you? Um, I think we were thinking we were doing synodality when we had um, the first few days. The Holy Spirit came through in the voracious wind like we were actually reflecting on in the scripture. And then we actually practically lived uh, synodality and it was bumpy and painful, but it allowed that accompaniment, that journeying. And um, I think even Pope Francis himself says it's easier said than done and, and it's going to be messy. And that's what we experienced, um, the messiness, but it, it's in that messiness and that chaos that the spirit was with us um, and that we were able to unpack and understand the other, um, to come to a fuller understanding um, to get to where we are now. So uh, I think um, where it's going to be a bit tricky for a lot of um, churches around the world um, to to get into this process, but it's well worth it, I think. Yeah, it's been tricky. Um, but yeah, like Aaron said, you know, the Holy Spirit helped us through the process. And, uh, you know, sometimes it can be uncomfortable to mm. sit with these matters, you know, and um, my mind dr during the plenary council drifted back to um, the scripture that we explored in the first plenary of Mary and Martha and to sit and listen. And that is uncomfortable. Um, but I think we uh, lent on the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit came through and did its wonderful thing and, and uh, help us to, to get through all, all the bumps and all the, the little uh, roadblocks along the way. We've got to remember that the process started four years ago. Mm -hmm. And so what we were dealing with was the fruit of, of um, suggestions and ideas that had come from the from people in all parishes and dioceses around Australia. And that, of course, is the beginning of synodality. So uh, the, the, the people of God were having their say, and um, I think in the first session, um, when the, the, there was a lot of hard work to bring all that together, but it was brought together uh, not I believe, not by people coming with their uh, ideologies or whatever, but listening and bringing together all that they've heard from people around Australia. And then we, uh, that was taken by the interim um, committee who were hoping that they were then drawing that together. But we did detect... Uh, that there were sort of ideologies creeping in. And so that was when the breakout and the people of God, I think, were listened to anew uh, after that. Uh, were there other any other amendments from the floor that... Um, uh, 
well, certainly I don't know about, but were, were there, was, can you, if there was, can you talk about those? Or oh, motions from the floor? Um, so as I said, um, the addition of the uh, motion to add the RCIA in, uh, an example of something that wasn't there before, but uh, we got a whole um, paragraph in about that. Again, fruit of discernment and prayer um, and the ability to, to change up the program, which we didn't have before. Um, and again, there was a few other additions or edits to the text that happened and the addition of um, the paragraph or, or the addition to a paragraph on the importance of um, the, the priesthood and encouraging vocations to the priesthood. Um, yeah. Okay. Any other questions around this? Then? I've got one. Thanks. We know that throughout the assembly there's been some discussion that we, we've had a lot of challenges <coughs> excuse me, within our church over recent years, particularly in the COVID crisis that we've now seen declining congregations. I think we're down to about 12% Catholics practicing. How do you hope uh, the fruits of this plenary assembly will lead to more Catholics coming back to Mass and in fact to us forming new disciples for our church? Um, well, for me, I hope uh, it, it does generate some um, important initiatives that come out of this. Um, for me, it's all about the importance of the encounter um, with Christ. Um, and I hope that um, what we take um, away from this uh, can be very practical in the parishes. Um, so it doesn't have to be um, always led by the bishops, the big changes that are coming, that, um, that we can get people um, inspired um, by different opportunities that will come from this. Um, I think uh, we have work to do um, and we just need to uh, get some time to to um, have a bit of a, a debrief I suppose from this and, and then move forward with hope that um, the programs and the initiatives uh, will bear fruit yeah does anyone else want to add to that I might just add a little bit uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful too that um, going away from this, uh, we can people can see that we're we are working towards a more Christ-centered church. Um, there is a lot of work to be done from here, uh, but hopefully everyone sees through through the formational um, process. People can see their place in the church, a church for all, um, one body. Each uh, day we had sort of a, a prayer, a morning prayer, which was uh, had sort of symbolic actions in it. Um, so we started off with light, and then we had water, and then we turned up on one day when when there was mulch <laughs> on the table, not all over the table, but in the container, and then into that mulch we planted seeds. And then we arrived this morning and there were plants uh, growing. It's all very magical. <laughs> but the thing is that what we were doing, what we have been doing this week is only set, uh, sort of discovering the, the, the mulch that is going to be uh, the, um, what's going to help us. And then we, we are just planting the seeds. And so it'll be a while before the seeds um, show, even show their, that they're coming up out of the mulch, out of the, out of the mess. And um, now some of the, uh, a lot of it is to do with setting up structures or, or uh, yeah, setting up structures for development. And of course they're going to take time. And one of the things that kept, coming up was the particularly from the bishops which uh, and understandably they say well we've been given all these uh, structures to put in place but uh, they're going to cost and um, particularly 
the dioceses that are poor, um, say the Kimberleys, for example, not only are they poor, but they're, they're scattered. And the, so um, somebody brought this up right at the end, didn't they? Is that how, one thing we haven't uh, addressed is how can the um, more um, advanced, not advanced, that's not the right word, but uh, richer um, dioceses help the poor diocese, which I'd say would be a big challenge. Since I might just end with this last one, um, you spoke there about the mulch, an interesting symbol. What are the, some of the moments, either big or small, that you think are perhaps best illustrating this assembly? To me, I think um, what happened on Wednesday would be, uh, you know, it was just such a, a big moment for the plenary it, in many ways. You know, it, it helped us to um, refocus ourselves for these uh, last two days. Um, but it was also, it also brought the tension that was already in the room, I think, onto the table. And it just made it so obvious to everybody that this is how we're all feeling. Um, there's no hiding away from that tension anymore. Um, and then the I think from there, the defining moment was how we were going to go about dealing with it. No one really had an answer. Um, you know, we had we had people standing up. We had people, and, and they weren't sure how to feel either. No one was really sure. I certainly felt really empty in that moment. I didn't know how to feel. But I think um, we were able to, t uh, well, with that tension, we were able to... Um, to work through it and uh, really we sat with it and let the Holy Spirit do its work. Had we, um, had we just gone blown by, we wouldn't have um, had such um, meaningful um, dialogue and discernment for the last two days and I think uh, the, the, the outcome of the plenty wouldn't be as fruitful as what it is now. So if I had to pick a moment, um, that was truly defining. Yeah, that would be my moment. Um, I think uh, it's probably a defining moment for the church, really. When we look back in history and we talk about the plenary council, that's the moment that the council changed. And uh, the Holy Spirit uh, in the ferocious wind, the wind actually did blow in <laughs> into the room, um, changed the tact because maybe we were asking about um, being Christ-centred, um, but maybe we weren't. Maybe we had lost uh, focus a little bit, being pro, um, following an agenda. Um, we had just let the Holy Spirit then take over. Um, and for me, it was an, um, an example of the need to trust the Holy Spirit. Um, I think sometimes we like to put the Holy Spirit in a box um, and, and we can't do that because um, the Holy Spirit um, is what's going to fuel um, and uh, set on our hearts on fire for Christ uh, and, and move our church uh, into its um, new evangelization and, and reinvigorate it. So um, I just say open the windows and let the Holy Spirit blow where it wills because if, any, if this week is anything to go by it's going to be a great ride for me uh, the significant thing I think was that uh, synodality is listening and we listened and I had a real sense that our bishops listened uh, because it's it's um, we can be motivated by fear of the unknown and fear of if we make a decision, especially if Rome's sort of looking looking down on us or looking up at us, <laughs> um, that, uh, you know, we might have to explain ourselves that the things didn't work well. well but the bishop, the, there was this um, great confidence in the Holy Spirit, and I think in the people of God, that the bishops did... Um, follow almost in everything the um, uh, consultative vote. Well, thank you very much for participating in this final media brief, or no, the, the second last media briefing. I'll thank our guests on the panel. We had Aaron Gillard, Julian Nguyen, and Father Tony Corcoran. Thank you so much for staying back.